Aloha! You are listening to Inside the Desert Oasis Room, episode number 228. This podcast is brought to you by Don the Beachcomber. Enjoy classic dining and cocktails in a tropical exotic setting. Now open in beautiful Madeira Beach, Florida. Can't get to Florida? Get a piece of Don the Beachcomber from the comfort of your own home. Visit shop.donbeachcomber.com to see brand new merch like collectible tiki mugs, postcards, magnets, stickers, t-shirts, hats, and more. That's shop.donbeachcomber.com. The legend returns. This podcast is sponsored by Frogtown Brewery, an independent craft brewery and tap room located in Northeast Los Angeles along the LA River. Stop in and enjoy one of their excellent beers from their ever changing, diverse menu. Tell them the Desert Oasis Room sent you and get your first pint on us. Limitations apply. For more information, go to frogtownbrewery.com and follow them on social media at Frogtown Brewery. Today, we chat with tiki collector and craftsman, Robert Miller. Robert is the builder, owner, and proprietor of the River Kai, a hidden tropical paradise he built himself in the wilds of Riverside. We chat about what it took to build the River Kai, home tiki bar projects, home bartending, and more. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did bringing it to you. If you'd like to follow our adventures, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Polynesian Pop, where we chronicle events, bars, travel spots, cocktail tutorials, and more. And if you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Polynesian Pop, where membership grants you early access to podcasts and videos, front-of-the-line privileges to new merch releases, as well as exclusive content, meetups, and screen credits. All righty, let's get into this. Pour yourself a cocktail and join us inside the River Kai. And give it up for my friend, Robert Miller. You're a brave man wearing white behind the camera. Well, you know, the thing is, I didn't have, so I have to, uh, I had to do some laundry before, like, if you can smell, like, like I laundered everything bef- this morning. So, like, I'm, like, freshly laundered, right? Oh. And, um, but my colors, I, ha- I, have, I have to do those separately. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, those weren't done. So... But everything else is like, like so. If I smell like Tide, it's because like I just pulled everything oh, out I of the you dryer. Were say you smell like Thai food. I'm like, right. <laughs> well, you should have brought some. I want some drunken noodles. I love the Thai food too, man. So, all right. Well, we are rolling. Are we? Yeah. Thanks for being on the podcast, dude. It, I love it. It's, it's it's been it's been years and years and years in the making, but yet I've been just wanting on the to, other side of the hill from me. I've been wanting to. <laughs> Not only get here, but I have you at my place. Like the podcast is secondary, right? It, it's just that, like, we're neighbors, and everywhere we go for this tiki thing, we're driving to LA, Orange County, mm-hmm. Palm Springs, wherever the stuff is happening. Yep. And you're right here. And so I've apologized to you before for that. I apologize again. Like, I'm sorry it took so long to get over here, and I'm sorry it took so long to get you over at my place, but now we're doing it. We're doing it, and man. I, and, and I've been fortunate enough to be here like three times in the past two months. Yeah. We're, right? making, we're making up for it, There's like for a holiday. It, right? There was like, was it last week or two weeks ago? Yeah. And then tonight. All right. It is three, huh? It's been three. That's like been two the, months. The trifecta. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, yeah. So, thanks for having me. And I guess we're, we're going to start with a cocktail? Yeah. Might as well get it going because... Uh, okay. Okay. Warns me up. I love it. I love it. So lots of stuff I want to talk to you about because I feel like one day there was just Riverside and then the next day, boom, out of nowhere, there's the River Kai. You, you almost kind of came out of nowhere. You, I mean, that's what it feels like to me. You know what? That's a really great analogy. 
because okay. it's kind of like I think there's a lot of people out there that we just don't know of, and I think over the last hmm, four years or so, like I enjoy all this, yeah, and I want people that are into this to enjoy no. what I do. I'm not calling you a noob or anything because, like, looking at your collection and stuff, you've obviously been collecting for a very long time. Like, right over your left shoulder, I see nothing but vintage. And you've got stuff there that I don't have, and I've been collecting since the 90s, you know? Yeah, so, you got me beat. Like, I, I consider, like, you... Well, it's not a competition. Christy I mean, White. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm just saying that... I'm just saying that... You, you're you not somebody that looks like a Johnny-come-lately, you know? It looks like you've been doing this for a long time. But at the same time... The River Kai just seems like it just popped up out of nowhere, you know? So, I bought this house in 2009. When I bought the house in 2009, that opened up the doors. Yeah. Because, like, this house, even though it's a, it's a much smaller footprint, it reminded me of my grandfather's house. He had a two-acre ranch-style home with a huge pool area. And when I saw the pool area and everything, I'm Was like... Was he out here, Riverside? He, he, is this the grandfather who was bartending at the Mission Inn? The Mission Inn, yes. Sweet. Yes, All right. yes. So so he, he retired out of March in like around 71. And um, I think he bartended at the NCO for a little bit. But his first gig outside of retiring from, from the Air Force was he was bartender at the Mission Inn in downtown Riverside. Right. And so uh, I have the one photo of him behind the bar and whatnot. But um, he... He had this long ranch style home on two acres. Uh, for those of us who have been around for a long time, in a town called Sunnymead. Sunnymead, yeah. Yeah, aka Marino Valley. So he lived up on the hill, two acres, nothing around him, and he had this big pool area. So wait a second. Marino Valley used to be Sunnymead? Yeah. Isn't Sunnymead still out there? No. Oh, I thought they were. No, it, it got incorporated as a city like in 1980 something. Okay. I want to say around 84, maybe 86, okay. somewhere okay. around that time. Um, but um, uh, what you call it, uh, he, you know, back then, you know, he had his vinyl. He was a big right. Herb Albert, right. Glenny, uh, uh, Jackie Gleason. Um, I can't think off the top of my head, but but uh, Frank, he was a big Frank Dean, Rat Pack type style right. stuff. Right. All those Croners type stuff. And he would have his buddies over and just have cocktails out in the pool area. They were known for throwing luau's. You know, they, he served in the service, right? So he brought stuff back from um, Guam, right, where my mom was born. Um, Your mom was born in Guam. Yeah. So I saw a photo of when she was living in Guam, and I think you posted that, right? But you know, when my when my mom was living in Guam or something like that, yep. and I thought, oh, dude, you got island roots. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> kind of. She almost got killed in Guam too. Oh, you're kidding me? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Come the on. photo, the photo you saw of her with the little little straw hats, baby. Yeah. They were posted up at the beach, and they got you know the, they got the coconut um, trees. Oh, dude, the coconut, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so the first time I went to the Cook Islands. I was, you know, we rented a scooter and I was sitting on the scooter and it was hot, you know, it's a tropical island. So I get into the shade, I pull off the side of the road and I get into the shade. Not that there was like a lot of traffic. Uh huh. It was the island of Aitutaki, which only has a population of a little over a thousand people. So a really small island. And this local came by on a tractor and he's coming up real slow and I'm on the side of the road and I'm thinking like, you know, okay, what does this guy want? You know, and he's waving at me. And so I'm waving back and I'm thinking like, he's just being neighborly and he is being neighborly, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about the Cook Islands is there's very different from what we're used to with say like the Hawaiian Islands, right? The, the Hawaiian Islands, they've lost their patience with tourists, I think. <laughs> and a lot of it is like tourists go home. Yeah, get your photos and go home. Go home, right? Holly. Right? And, but at the Cook Islands, they, they thank you for visiting their islands and for celebrating their culture. Right. Nice. So anyway, this guy's waving at me and stuff, and he says, he says, hey, friend. And I said, hi. And he said, uh, you need to move. He's like, you need to move. You're under a palm tree. And I said, oh, and he goes, yeah, if the coconut, if the coconut falls on you, 
it's it, it could kill you he's like so you need to move and i was like oh thank you yeah you know <laughs> we're like if you're in hawaii you're gonna be like oh look at this tourist over here you know so no diss to our friends in hawaii we love our friends in hawaii they're yeah, just not I'll be there in they're just not the same people as they are in the cook islands that's all i'm saying and so yeah and you would hear the thumps the doom like a really loud thump on the ground from a coconut that fell well one fell she's not even one years old fell right next to her right next to her wow yeah, yeah. not even a wise tale that would not have been good yeah that would my not grandfather always says that uh my grandfather had five daughters my mom was the middle and uh my grandfather said that uh, my mom ruined his best game of golf he my 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 grandmother always knew when the day was going to be she knew it and he was like got invited to go golf out there and he's like yeah yeah go we're not gonna have it's not gonna go it's not gonna happen sure enough he's out there having the time of his life yeah and here comes one of those willy jeeps those military yeah yeah, yeah just hauling ass yeah, yeah. over the golf carts yelling out sergeant burns sergeant burns your wife's having a baby he's like oh shit takes the golf clubs throw in the back and they're just hauling ass yeah, to the yeah. hospital and then my mom was born yeah well i'd say that was worth that was worth the sacrifice of that I, game. I say so. <laughs> I say so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, you have a very interesting background because so let me let me start with that first, but I want to get into some of this some of the things that I've learned in the past couple of weeks. But let's start with that. Do you think that that's where the island influence came from? Oh God, yes. Both sides of the family, though. Yeah. Like like my my dad's dad. I I I still have visual memories of like. Being I don't know maybe three years old so 1977 and him having like a dude playing like the xylophone on TV yeah the Martin Denny show yeah yeah and then there was like all the all the island stuff back then I mean you had Elvis and Hawaii my grandpa was a big Hawaiian uh, yeah. Elvis fan yeah there was just so many things back then that was just like little seeds that yeah. made yeah. us what we are whether it was Gilligan's Island or Hawaii Five O yeah. um, it was certainly so a different many time. different things we had um. We had a lot of um, artists back then making Hawaiian records. It seemed like everyone had a Hawaiian record. Oh, yeah. From Connie Francis to Annette Funicello to Andy Williams. They all had a Hawaiian album, right? Bing Crosby had a Hawaiian album. And it was it was a thing, you yeah. know? And the, the Brady Bunch doing, what was it, three episodes in Hawaii? That was the best. Dude, they were. They were. I pour too much. This drink's always a lot big drink. That's okay. That's all right. You're all right. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Look at that mint, dude. It's so perfect. So the, here's the funny part about Are the mint. Are you growing this? <laughs> so, so when I bought the house. Okay. This house, the one corner had fresh mint. Um, Thank you, sir. Should I just use this? Yeah. Can I use this? Yeah. One of those coasters will work. Thank you. Um. And um, I, uh, I had fresh mint growing in one corner and a lime tree in the other. Oh, nice. What are the odds of that? Dude, that's every cheeky person's dream. Dude. Mint and lime in the backyard? And then next door, I have Jamaicans that grow sugar cane. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'll start making my own rum. So wait a second. They're growing sugar cane over there? Yeah. And it's... It's... It's thriving? Does it, don't you have to be like in tropical for sugar cane? My dad, my dad took a, a couple of pieces and he's got that stuff growing in his backyard now. Oh, really? Yeah. It's rad. That's awesome. So I've, I've been trying to grow. I planted a lime tree like 10 years ago and I finally got three limes this past year. Finally. You grew it how long ago? I, I feels like 10 years ago when I planted it. Because certain certain fruit trees... Like avocados, first five years, yeah. you're not going to get nothing out of it. Yeah. Um, but um, um, but citrus. I, you, do you have consistent consistency with watering? Yes, it's in, it's in a planter with with a sprinkler head, but I don't think that the sprinkler head reaches it as well. And I I didn't fertilize it, so like I asked my gardener about it, and um, he said, well, he's he said, do you fertilize it? And I thought, 
isn't that your job? <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a, the, there's, right. a, there's so many blow and goes, man. Right, yeah, that's what Everybody he, complains. That's what it is. My gardener doesn't do this. My I'm like, well, he's just a, a long guy. He's going to come in. He's going to trim this, trim that. Right, right. And be gone. Right. Um, uh, so, so anyway, he says, yeah, you should fertilize it. So I, I started fertilizing it. And it's uh, actually starting to bear fruit now. But since it's the winter time, it stopped, right? Yeah, right so now probably, you're yeah, probably right now you, in the, pretty soon you're going to start getting blooms. Okay. So it should start up again, I'm guessing, like in this late spring, early summer? Right, right now. You, oh, right any, now. Any day you'll start to see the see it go. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, um, yeah, so that I had mint growing in a terracotta pot. The like the pot was about twelve Smart. inches diameter, Good, that and stuff. it was thriving. It was thriving until it started because the roots are shallow, right? They don't go deep. They 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 send out runners. Yes, and it started to send runners around this pot, and I think it choked itself out. So I so I trimmed some of it out of there and I put it in a planter out front, where there is a sprinkler head. Uh huh. And dude. It grew so fast that it scared me because I thought, oh, if this thing, if, if these things like find their way to the grass, they'll choke out my grass. The good thing is it's easy. Though That one's pretty easy to keep contained because, yeah, mine's natural. And it, you'll see it pop up and I'll, I'll pull it and you'll just get like a root runner and I just keep pulling it and it'll stop. But I have to try to keep it contained in that corner. Right. But, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I kind of freaked out. So, um so I gutted it out of that planter because I didn't want it to take over my grass. But I think I'll I'll plant it again around the pool because I have. I used to have these bird of paradise out there, and the way that the bird of paradise was growing, it was growing in diameter. It was growing big, t taller too, but the diameter is getting bigger and bigger. The giant bird of paradise. It, there were blackbirds. Yeah. I and mean, yeah. and I and it, I, I, I didn't want right it now. to. Yeah, I yanked it out because I didn't want it to crack the coping of my pool. You know, so I, I yanked it all out and I put plumerias there. I put queen palms and plumerias all around there. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put some mint on the ground there, you yeah. know, so because there's no ground covering on it. The mint would be nice, but then it looks like, doesn't it look like a bush when it grows out or? No, it stays low. It stays low. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you see here, maybe add a little bit more. I'll show you later on. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I love it because it's funny, man. Dude, it I'll looks just, good, I'll just man. walk out, like, like, grab some, smack it, and yeah. throw it in. Yeah, I love, I love the, like, you have the really nice uh, big leaves that have that nice texture on it. Good stuff. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that, that'll. Here we go. That'll work. That will work. Oh, yeah, that's delicious. What are we drinking? <laughs> is this one of yours? It, just... It's 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 something that I'm, I'm kind of playing around with. I don't have an official drink yet. Okay. But going back to living in Riverside, one of the things that Riverside's been known for in its heyday was oranges. Oranges, right? So um, it's 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 hard to make your own drink when there's like so many different variations and it, yeah it only all it takes is one certain thing to change the whole complexity of the drink and make it something else um i will say like i do like a, a good chief lapu lapu that mm -hmm. takes three ounces mm. of orange juice just in one another drink that i really love and i appreciate the man for sharing that cocktail with me is ron farrell's drifter's reef that's a great cocktail that's a really good yeah. cocktail and when you look at the ingredients not too far off from a, from a Chief Lapu Lapu. Yeah. Lemon juice. Okay. And uh, orange juice. Um, I want to be able to have a drink that um, none of the fruit or anything is seasonal. That way, at any given time, I can do you it. You can, yeah. So um, I do have um, something down the lines where it's dominantly orange juice and then pineapple juice and lemon juice. Um, yeah, and then what is it? Uh, some uh, some simple syrup, some orgeat, uh, a light rum, a dark rum. And, that sounds good. And I think like a dash of, of bitters. Um, I think I that I think, sounds and then, totally yeah, like a tiki drink. And then this guy right here, a little bit of curacao in there. Yeah, 
Yeah. I think that's it. I mean, right now I just said, because we're just talking, I'm just like, screw it. Yeah, yeah. I know the proportions of sour, sweet, spirit. You got that balance. Yeah. You really can't mess it up. Yeah. Love it. But I just, I, I like just winging it sometimes. Yeah, so do I. So do I. Yeah. I just, I, I cheat a little bit. I use certain drink formulas and then I just mm -hmm. plug in all the variables. You know? Oh, man. Um, like when I throw a party. Um, this is a good drink. I will, I will bust out a Excel spreadsheet and it will get, I'll, I'll put in the formulas of, of, you know, what each ingredient is, how many drinks do I want? And then those ounces, you know, they, they times whatever, you know, let's say, right, you know, whatever. Scale it up. And then I'll have it to where it'll tell me how many bottles or when it comes like, if it's like juice and I'm thinking, and I don't have like, like, look like the. I'm not going to be able to squeeze certain things just because of volume or whatever. Tells me how many of the cartons I might right, need or right. whatever it may be. And it has helped me out tremendously. I mean, you were here for the for the holiday party yeah. in December. and um, Which was fantastic, by the way. Yeah. That, you had a nice drink station set up. So you had a couple of pre-batched mm -hmm. cocktails. And mm -hmm. then you had the hot buttered rum. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then you had the the your little pebble ice maker running all night. The, yeah, for a you know for tonight like today, the opal works great. Yeah, for something like that, it's, it's there. It's, it's hard to keep up. But thank God, one one mile away is a Sonic. Yeah, pull in there. Yeah, I'll take uh, six bags. Yeah, of ice. yeah. Where's your Sonic around here? Van Buren and Magnolia. Oh, okay. It's right there. All right. One time. Hey, Only one time Magnolia. they were not able to do it. And I'm like calling people over off Central. I'm like, can you go to the Chick-fil-A for me? Yeah, because Chick-fil-A, you could, you could get ice there too. And so, it's like three, 350 for a yeah, big old for bag. for a big bag. Either, either place. Yeah, so there's no Sonic near me. I used to drive to the one over by Magnolia and the 15 freeway mm -hmm. next to um, El Super 7. But um, there's a Chick-fil-A that's close by. So I've still got some in there. All I right, need to top, this top off. it off. Uh, so sometimes I go there. And then another trick is you can go to the meat section of a grocery store because they display their seafood in Pebble Ice. Right. And you can request bags there and just ask them to price it for you. Sometimes they'll do it. Sometimes they won't. But that's interesting. I'm, man, yeah. that's a new one for me. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, when you go back there to buy seafood, right, it's it's all laying on pebble ice. That's awesome. So, so yeah. a couple, couple of sources there for you. But let's talk about the River Kai. So, as I mentioned earlier, I just kind of felt like, boom, here's the River Kai. So, let's start. So, you built this room from scratch. Mm -hmm. So, for the people that are listening... Take us through what that was like. Give it a good description so they can kind of picture this in their head. Because I'm sitting in here, and I can't believe that you built this from scratch. I really appreciate that. Um, so, bought the house in 2009, and that, like I said, it just opened up the opportunity to just do stuff. Before then, I was renting. Um, and... I started off with, with a bar inside the kitchen area. Right. And then I, I, I at that time, with my girlfriend, Shauna, she moved in. And like, my house is 1965. All original. And that kitchen needed love. It wasn't one of the cool ones, man. And, We're talking uh, about this one. This house. Yeah. And so uh, she's like, I want, let's get a new kitchen. Let's do it. So we did. So we took the breakfast nook area that was the bar area and made that part of the kitchen. So then I took the bar, and it was a. It's, this is a four bedroom house, and just her and I, and the bar went into one of the rooms and started to create oh, this room. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we had gotten married, and and then all of a sudden, before you know it, boom, our son came, and then needed once the I, room. Yeah. So that room was directly across from our room. And I was like, our first child's gonna be directly across. So I knew right there and then. Once we had the first one, we're gonna have two. So I'm not going to spend too much time. So I just took everything, put it in the other room, didn't set anything up. 
it was just there. Yeah. And um, he was born in in December. I'm sorry, November of uh, 2016, and then July of 2017, this started. Now, I had for for a while like get out the iPad or paper and was sketching this mm-hmm. and that and originally the door wasn't going to be here and so on and so forth and and I was like how can I maximize the space because I don't have the biggest backyard because it's a lot of concrete there's a pool and all those all those things and I don't want to take away from outdoor seating right, either right and so I I looked at like the the, the metal uh, cargo things. I've looked at tough shed. I'm like, none of this gives that real like tiki hut feel. And my brother-in-law who's got a background in, in construction, even though he doesn't do no construction, he's like, we can do this, Robert. And it was my brother-in-law, Aaron, my dad and me. And we started off with the floor with all the pressure treated wood. Right. And it's el- it's off the ground, believe right, it or not. Right. And and so the whole bottom is is pressure treated. Then we put on the base uh, um, the the flo- what do they call it? the floor board whatever subfloor they- subfloor. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we framed it up. Yeah. So <laughs> he's building this thing to specs. So the, w- the walls were eight foot tall. Yeah. And I'm we're sitting over the on the deep end of the pool. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, that thing looks gigantic. It right. looks tall. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I don't think it looks right. It just doesn't look right. And I go, I think we need to need to take it down some. Okay. So we 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 brought it down, and so the 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 walls, the sides, is seven feet. Okay. So it, it came down some, and then we we did, we did the top and pitched it out. And I'm right. telling you, putting up a, a pitch. Yeah. out the front yeah and what is that a that takes some math right because four you by, have i think it's a four by eight beam it's 20 feet long okay and then yeah it, you're right it takes some math to get that right you got to get the angle mm-hmm. so it's an a-frame so for people that if they could use their imagination right so it's like a gabled ceiling on the inside right but on the outside there's an a-frame peak that this gabled ceiling kind of um continues into mm-hmm. right into that a-frame peak on the outside and it's sloped yep so it requires a little bit of geometry because of all the angles when you start framing all this this like this frame is not going to be the same dimension as this frame because of that angle yeah that yeah. slope yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i mean i can't take credit on on getting the right angles and 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 all that i just said this is the size i want yeah I give it all to my, my brother-in-law and we got all that up and, um, I, you know, the, the windows, the, I call them the hurricane shutters. Right, right. Um, I wanted to where we could keep it closed up like we are now. Yeah. But we live in sunny, sunny, sunny Southern California. Yeah. And I got the pool. Dude, it's freaking genius. You just swing them open. So the walls swing up from a countertop. They're so like at about waist high, you guys put like a countertop all the way around. Mm-hmm. And then the walls swing up, and then they latch mm-hmm. underneath the eave. Yep. And so it opens all up to the outdoor seating area, and then the other side opens up to the pool. And the other side's hooked up to a pulley system. Oh, to a pulley. Pool. Yeah, okay. a pulley system. Tie it all off. With That's the like Ron Farrell's. Very, very. Have you been some... to Ron Farrell? Oh yes, I've yeah, had, so I've had the honor to be there a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he did it with the pulley as well. So yeah, it's very similar. Yeah, so. You did an excellent job. So, like, I'm I'm gonna say this because, and this wasn't planned, obviously. When I first walked in, I always come in here at night, and it's it looks great at night with all the lighting and stuff. But seeing it during the day and seeing that A-frame peak, it's it's stunning. Like, I walked through your back door and I thought, oh my god, this is like this is so beautiful. It's fun, thank you. Yeah, and with the pool and everything. Yeah. What a great backyard. The colors of the of the outside. Is, was my 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 best take on on the um, the boathouse of the uh, Adventure Land uh, uh, Jungle Cruise? Yeah. When you go on, yeah. I took cl- up close photos of, of how they dry brush and everything, and put down one coat and then one over it, dry brush it to give it some texture, and then all the trim and whatnot. Everything had to be routed. Right. Everything's right. routed. Yeah. 
everything. And did then an awesome let job alone on what's that. on the inside, yeah. Yeah, and then I love the way you treated the TV, just like in Trader Sam's. You put the bamboo fence or bamboo screen on it. Are which, you gonna add more to it though? I, I'm trying to think. I don't of something. think you have to. I like it. Well, I, I'm I'm kind of thinking of having something that I could add to behind it. When, okay. When I know for a fact I just don't want it on at all. Like it's cool when I have it on and and, and this is downward. Maybe add a little bit of vine. I don't want to overdo it. I, I like how it's just clean looking. Yeah. But yeah, um, um, maybe take this off and then add. Um, some bamboo here like bamboo there and trim, then... trim it out and i just bring it up and hook it to this oh this there guy. you go and it stays up when i want to you know watch whatever because again i know you shouldn't have a tv in a, in a tiki bar but but hey when you're at this house and you got the backyard and you're just uh, on any given yeah. sunny 100 degree weather and you're out in the pool and yeah. you want to have the game on or something yeah. let it run yeah i get it but like what were we watching the other day um, Hell's Half Acre. Yeah. So I went home and I downloaded it. Because I was like, where did you get this? And you said, it's online. Just go yeah. find it online. Yeah. And there were actually a couple of links leading to it. Yeah. There were, people have it loaded in different versions. One has like, it's funny because there's one, the one that I downloaded, it's in English, but it's subtitled no. in Spanish. Oh, I, I like, <laughs> is it in like some Chinese, Japanese? No. Sub, I mean, that would have been and rad. Then there was another one that, and I, I can't really remember the reason why I downloaded the other one first. And then I ended up finding this other link and I downloaded that one second. And I kept that one. I deleted the other one because, yeah, yeah but um, what, what a visually stimulating movie for the tiki guy it so is. yeah like um and that's what a, an hour and a half right there that you can just put on and it was and it was great background it's just black and white yeah get some glimpses of yeah. the original yeah. inter, uh um uh, uh, donna beachcomber and waikiki yeah which yeah it's awesome i love doesn't it doesn't get any better i love it so yeah you you did everything right here because you did still even though that there's that tv there but when you did this this uh, bamboo frame or whatever you want to call it. Cover. Co cover. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, that makes it acceptable, right? So, you know, the rules, we talked about that. No no clocks, no TVs, no windows, right? But yeah. this is a pool bar. So you got to have these windows and you, mm -hmm. can, you can close them like you have here. Then it makes it intimate, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then in the summertime, you can pop those things open. Mm -hmm. And you can enjoy it, the the view of the pool from the bar, and then you can play the stuff that you want to play on this TV, which works out really great. Yep. So, so it's still very authentic, and I use that word purposefully because a lot of people will say, "Oh, tiki's fake." So there's there's no such thing as authenticity. Mm. I disagree mm -hmm. because mid century tiki. Uh, if you look at all of the bars and restaurants and everybody that was doing their thing back then, there was a commonality that created what uh, its own authenticity. Mm -hmm. So mid-century Polynesian pop style tiki has its own authenticity, mm -hmm. like the no TVs, no windows, no clocks rule, right? And um, so it still feels authentic. Yeah. I mean... I could make it a little more authentic if I got rid of all the tiki mugs. But even that, like, I didn't want this to be a focus. Yeah. And so running no, the, I, running the I shelf. I wouldn't get rid of the tiki mugs. Oh, no, I'm kidding. But but it's like when you talk about how were bars back then, I mean, they they sure in the heck didn't have all these lamps either. But sure. they had something like this. Right, right. They had maybe a, a tiki or two. They definitely had puffer fishes and floats but and, and La Hala matting. But other than that... And some, and some greenery is very simple. Yeah. Very, very simple. They were a lot more simple than what yeah. we're doing today. Well, the thing is, you know, we live in a different world. So when we when we build our bars now, we have, what, 70 years worth of tiki bar history to look at, to say, yeah. I want to pull from this and I want to pull from that. And we're pulling a lot of effects from Disney, right? We're pulling animatronics. Like this, this TV is like... Uh, Obviously, Trader Sam's inspired. So we're pulling from these things that didn't exist back no. then, right? So in the 30s, 40s, 50s, when 
Don and Vic were running their tiki bars. Yeah. They didn't have animatronics in their bars. You know, that came later. Yeah. But now we're, we're pulling from all that stuff, right? These flicker bulbs like that, that you've got going in here. Oh, yeah. You know? Flame bulb, yeah. Yeah, because I've got that in mind too, right? And, um, and the tiki mugs. I mean, obviously that wasn't a thing back then because that was not something they thought to But they're just collect. so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they really, really it, it's, are. They really are. They and really I, are. I really have a big appreciation of the of the older ones. And oh, 100%. You know, the thing is, the difference is that because they were never intended to be collected, they have a different look and feel. And the thing about buying something that was never intended to be collected, when you find that Islander mug at a thrift store, you don't know if that's the last one that will ever be found in the wild. Because we don't know how many were made. They yep. were never intended to be collected. But if you buy a mug that's one of 500, and you flip the mug over, and it says number 135 of 500, you know that there's 365 other ones out there. Yep. You know? Yep. So you, it's, it's just different. It is. You know? It is. So it is. And, you know, even though they're not as elaborate, they have a pedigree. They have a history. They mm -hmm. have they have a story, where a lot of the newer mugs are just really made for commerce. You know. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not dissing the newer mugs uh, as much as it sounds like I'm dissing them because there's a lot of talented artists out there no, that are this, putting this, out this, some really this great. This girl right here. Yeah, I really mean, great mugs that are Car really Carol Scott. Rob? Yeah, true pieces of art. I mean, that's. That's Lost Temple, but Paul Briggs, Tiki Tom, yeah, he, he did a fantastic job on that. Pied eyed, you know, yeah, yeah. Molder, yeah. Like Ron Farrell's um, Tiki, yeah, this that's uh, one of my favorites. That's yeah, great. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So yeah, we we definitely live in a different world, and this whole thing that we're enjoying, it it never existed. Like no. you know. When we have these weekenders and we're mixing this stuff with rockabilly and hot rodding and pinups and mm -hmm. burlesque and and Disney and art and I mean you name it right this never existed no. this thing that we're doing no you know I mean I, I go back to thinking like what like I was going back to my grandparents and they have a set of friends over and my grandpa would make just some highballs and he, I mean he had a he had a big living room wood panel off top bottom arrow around and a huge bar so not only did he bartend but he had a home bar as well and they had the am radio on or they had the turntable going it was real simple you know yeah. now we we can really get elaborate you know oh, yeah and, and have a good time and i was love a, it. two weekends ago you had the laptop open and we were Dude. we were bringing up whatever we wanted right on a laptop and that's that's the beauty of today where with technology it's like I own a lot of music, but then it was like, hey, you got this? I'm like, no, but I can pull it up, and boom, boom. there it was. You got and it right now. Yeah. It was it was wild from what I can remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was a fun <laughs> night. Oh, my God, man. So you're reminding me. I haven't gotten that drunk in a long time. <laughs> we Well, we have some close friends that said, I don't think I've ever seen Adrian that drunk. I well, said, you know what? It made me feel good in a way because we were in good hands. Yes. And we oh all my felt God. comfortable. Okay. We so were very, and that's the thing. We all we, got really, him, really can comfortable. Can we get him a, give him a shout out? I, I want to give him a shout do out. Do it. So let's do it. We're talking about the Moffats, right? So. Them and. Yeah. And David. And Dave, 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 Gam, is it Gambale? I think, Gambale? you know what? It was funny. I meant to bring it up. Um, Gamble? I think it's Gam Gamble. Because it, it's G-A-M-B-A-L-E. Okay. And, and... Karen, Atomic Chick. Of course, Karen, Atomic Chick, and you guys for yeah. hosting us. Yeah. And opening your home and making food. And, Dude, it was wild. You know, you and your wife were awesome. Like, the hospitality smoked, was off do? the we hook. We some, some tri-tip. Yeah. And then uh, Tiffany and Sean brought over some uh, some side stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, I, I pre batched uh, That's where I messed up. I brought a, I brought popcorn that I got in Vegas, and we that killed tasted it. Tasted like that tasted, dude. The uh, Takis, later, the Takis one. Later at that night, I just remember seeing you eating out of the one of the trays. Of popcorn. But it was like right here, and I was like, <laughs> oh <laughs> man, I was so lit because so so. I mean, 
I normally don't make these drinks, but with the people that were coming, I'm like, we're going to do it right. Oh, we did it right. And I, I pre-juiced, you know, fresh grapefruit, fresh orange, because I, I got a couple orange trees. My dad's got a grapefruit tree. So I'm, I'm squeezing all this stuff, and I pre-batched uh, Blood of Kapu was the first one. Okay. Then we did uh, Navy Grog. Okay. Then we did Jet Pilot. I okay. remember that. So we did those three drinks. Then, because the night kept going, we polished like, off a twenty-year bottle of Appleton Estate. No, it was a plantation. Plantation. A plantation. That's the, right, not Appleton. And then, and plantation. Then, it was a twenty-year. Yeah, and 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 we were just I was just and busting out like, the big balls. We were just of tasting ice. it, and then like after after a certain while, you're like, "Fuck it, the bottle's almost gone. Let's just finish it." We did, and, and we, we killed the it. whole we bottle. We cleaned it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so shout out to the Moffats for putting me in an Uber and getting me home safely. So Seriously. That's, that's what I wanted to shout out because the next day, oh my God, I woke up and I I didn't know where I was. <laughs> and I was home. And I looked around and I thought, oh shit, I'm home. And I, th I think I was still drunk a little bit. And then my wife's like, everybody just stay the night. Everybody just stay the night. And she got beds ready because the yeah, kids weren't so nice. here. And, sh and I came out hung overs can be and she's nothing like, no personal one's, no one stayed the night nothing i go personal well, felt, i just i just comfortable yeah i just felt i, I just prefer to sleep in my own bed that's absolutely all. i hear that's you that's all especially when we got ubers the yeah. technology <laughs> technology yeah they called me an uber and shoved me in an uber and you know the next day i came back i took an uber back to get my car and um and i thought wow i haven't been that drunk in a long time <laughs> but it was fun right so <laughs> Technology, right? I had the laptop open, and we were just having a good time. We were listening to all kinds of music, from seventies to eighties to you name it. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, David, I'm I don't know what I was doing, but somehow he went outside and snuck in a particular album. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. So our friend David was yeah. the artist for yeah. licensed. To ill, right? Yeah, Beastie, to Boys. Ill, Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Beastie so, Boys, 1987. If you guys are familiar with that album cover with the jet plane mm -hmm. crashing, and then on the on the tail, the tail it says "Eat Me." Yeah, it's like uses numbers and that. There's a few things in there. Yeah. I can't remember the stories. Few but he's like, yeah, strikes. if you look here, there's this. If you look here, there's that. And then it was funny. We started talking about Led Zeppelin. He's like, yeah, the the whoever it was that was giving him the ideas and the colors he wanted, he goes, I want you to use the colors from Led Zeppelin number four mm. that has Stairway to Heaven and all that. And if you look at the colors of like, especially as it's wrecking and everything, those colors all just totally match with like the, the, the cover album of right. Led Zeppelin. And me and him, you know, I, I, I met him through, through Sean and Tiffany. Um, nice guy. Last last year in, in at oasis and i hung out with him uh forever just talking story and then later on um after everything was over with a bunch of us went out and had dinner and he was there with us and man we were just we started off with bc boys but we just talked about all kinds of music and whatnot mm -hmm. and it just he's a solid guy lives up yeah. in washington yeah um I guess he's going to be back down here in May and wants to run it back again. So yeah, yeah, caliente, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheeky caliente. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, that was a good time. Thanks for hosting us that night. That was uh, a lot of fun. You know, out here in the Inland Empire, we don't get a lot of love, right? There's mm -mm. there's there's a lot of nine oh nine jokes flying around and stuff that. And you I know, get it. I, yeah, yes and no, I get it. But you can it, say the same thing about L.A. I was there's some say. great parts of L.A. and there's a lot of bad. There's like a, some really shitty and, parts and, of and, L.A. And the funny part is, like, you take, for example, Riverside, the city, it's, it's, it's a nice hidden gem. Beautiful mid-century homes and everything. And a lot of people don't know that stuff. They just associate it with, like, other cities that are surrounding. I don't want to bring up. But, but yeah, and, and but yeah, there's Riverside's a lot of like, good stuff. There's a lot of historic stuff out here in Riverside. You've got the Wood Streets neighborhood. Oh, and, man. You know what I mean? Those like, homes. Right? Uh, vintage homes that are... Is that a... Uh, is that one of those... Um, historic districts? Yeah. Some areas are. Okay. And some homes through, through the city of Riverside, they go through certain steps, and their house can become like an historic home. Right. 
Um, Karen. Yeah. Um, she probably, oh well. The Hollywood House of Riverside. The Hollywood House of Riverside. So there's a reason why it's called the Hollywood House, because it was known in Riverside as the Hollywood House. They, Karen and Fabia did this, didn't bring that name out of their butt. Yeah. It, it is a legit term because there are other styles of homes. And then all of a sudden on this hill is this long, beautiful mid-century, mid-century home. Modern. And it just got shot for Atomic Ranch magazine. Yeah. Well, am I not supposed to say that? Oh well, it All is right. now. <laughs> it's out there. Just I, I'm just trying to get our listeners to understand the scope of the kind of house that they're in. Oh, it is. It's. It, I think it's. I think it's going to be released this summer. I think it's this okay. summer um, uh, edition for Atomic Ranch. Um, so there, you guys. You get that scoop first. Don't tell Karen. I said at that <laughs> atomic atomic chick on uh on uh instagram and and their their bar is the chi chi lounge yeah inside the of Chi-Chi the lounge, inside the hollywood house of riverside, the hollywood so, house of riverside. So here's what i'm getting at so we don't get a lot of love out here in the Inland empire but all the home bars that i've been to including hers including yours including wayne rogers which we need to get you down to mm-hmm. his place his place is called capsized yep and then i'm going to throw mine in there yes and then and then her friend uh karen's friend david who, um, yeah. have you he, seen his place? I have not seen his so place So I've yet, seen his place. But, but you know, I mean, he's got his fingers in a lot of stuff. No, I've part seen of his the room. Riverside and it's, Foundation. Yeah. He's part of Club 33 cocktails and whatnot. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. here's what I'm getting at. Every house that I know of, every tiki space that I know of out here is done well. Nothing is half-assed. No. Nothing. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, out backyard all of us tiki i group? think i i think all of us are, are we would proudly represent the tiki scene with I our think, with our, I think so our rooms very very well well another sneak peek for our audience um and you're invited to this as well i'm setting up a patreon event at wayne's place oh nice so at capsized and we're gonna have I think he's the best carver in the scene right now, Vic Hernandez. Yeah, we're he's, gonna have him. Uh, we're gonna have him come out and bring um, logs and stuff, and do some live do, carving. Do like do like there. a little carving carving party with uh, food and music. It's like and all Billy that kind Crest's of stuff. known for doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Or if you have Oasis, you get Al Evans up there on stage. Mm-hmm. Sitting there. <laughs> so we're gonna do that soon. We're just waiting for the weather to get a little bit better because mm-hmm. it's unpredictable right now. It's still. It gets cold sometimes, and even out of nowhere, it could rain. You know. Well, that's that's well. You bring that up, and I just had my fiftieth in January. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" I'm like, "Nothing," because it's January, and mm-hmm. I don't want to take the risk. And who wants to be out there in a in a dress or me in a Hawaiian shirt mm-hmm. without putting a coat on? Let alone have like dan- f- fire knife guy and dancers on right, the other right. side of the pool. I'm gonna throw one in the summer. Yeah. Hint, hint. Yeah. You know? There you go. But um, so um, we'll coordinate all that. And we'll put that out there, and for our uh, Patreon members, they'll get all the information there. Um, and if you guys are not following our Patreon, check it out: Patreon.com/slash/PolynesianPop. Um, I'm always releasing exclusive content there as well. But um, you know, I try to give back to them and. Try to do something regularly. So yeah, no, you know, you uh, you invited me to a couple of things, and yeah, what yeah. you do for for these guys, you're in always return, invited, dude. It's it's awesome. You're always invited. Oh, you're, you always it. have an open invitation to the Desert Oasis room. But um, uh, what was I going to say about this? You know, Wayne's place is pretty fantastic. He's got he's got two bars in his house. Mm. One's a whiskey bar. That's what I'm talking about. So one's a tiki bar. One's a whiskey bar. The whiskey bar call, is called Evil Genius Mixology. <laughs> and his whiskey bar is about the size of this room. So a 10 by 12. It's something like that. It's a separate, it's a, you know, separate space. And then he's got his tiki space, which is called Capsized. Mm-hmm. And um, man, his place is fun. We get over there and it's just like this. It's just like that night that we were here the last time. We put on this Saturday night safety dance and we just made cocktails. We took turns. It was funny because we started talking shit to each other like, 
oh, you can't make a drink. I'm like, you know, I can make a drink. Of course I can make a drink. Oh, yeah, I've never seen you make a drink. So then we took turns trying to top each other. That's and, of course, great. all the drinks were great because That's everybody was bringing their I A game. I would love to have here is I'm always making the drinks. That's why I like the batch. Yeah. And... I get it. When and, you're hosting, it's hard to... Yeah. You don't want to get stuck behind the bar. I am at when I have the luau here for the 50, the Hawaii Five-O. I do have a couple of people like, hey, I love the bartender. I'm like, yes. I mean, I still can't help it, to, but to batch certain cocktails, yeah. I just love to do that. Yeah. But to have some people either pre-batch or make it on the fly or whatever, like have at it. I just, I love that, that whole part because it's just like just different people helping out and diving in and just making that 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 experience that much better yeah versus just the one man show yeah you know love so that's cool that you guys yeah, are having you fun get, making you get, different you get, cocktails yeah you get something from everyone so yeah so all right so we've reached the point of the podcast where i like to ask some fun questions all right so are you game for some of these bring it all right so let's start I wear box of briefs. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know I was going to ask that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if you could pick anyone to play you in a movie, who would you choose? Oh, man. <laughs> now, think outside the box. They don't have to sound like you, look like you, or act like you. So, so you, you could say, you could say... Uh, I already got two. You could say Jennifer Lopez. No, I already got two. Okay. If... if if it has to be with a current actor um, that is of how they are now, I'll take Brad Pitt. Okay. I'll take Brad Pitt. Because that guy, man, he, I don't care what movie he's in. He always... He's a stud. Dude, I mean, whether it's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. how he's dressed, or Fight Club, or the Ocean's... Ocean's you know, Legs. here's the thing about Brad Pitt, too. So, I don't... Some people are going to give me shit for this. I don't care. <laughs> people are going to give me I shit because I picked Brad Pitt. I like Brad Pitt. I have nothing against I don't care about the, 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 the his private life. He's likable to me. I like him. I like him. I've never thought of Brad Pitt. I, it, I always say The Rock because people think that I, you know... They're, they're, like we, yeah. look, we look like twins. Now... Right? Now... We're like the if, Arnold if, Schwarzenegger if, and Danny DeVito version of twins. Me and The Rock. <laughs> Guess which one's Danny DeVito? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but if I could, if I could have from their younger day, take Sean Connery. That's a good Irish. Oh yeah, yeah. Good Irishman. Are you Irish? Um, yeah. Okay. So, so last name's Miller, but I got Burns, Kelly, McAllister, and Campbell. Like those are all Irish names. I have not done the, the okay. whole DNA test. My sister did, and she's over 50-some-odd percent Irish, and the rest is, like, German and whatnot. I, di I did the DNA test. I'm one-tenth of one percent Irish. Nice. Brother. My brother from another mother. <laughs> My brother from another I mother. See, I know why I liked you, man. Yeah. We, wait, yeah. we, got, we share blood. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. I got two kilts in the, in the closet. Oh, there you ready go. Ready to go, man. All right. Okay, so let's let's do another question. So... If you could spend time with anyone, real or fictitious, dead or alive, who would you choose? And these are the examples God. that I give to help you think outside the box, well, right? I, so I already got, got the ones that, that, that just are coming to my head. So, real or fictitious, dead or alive, fictitious, I think it would be fun to go time travel with Marty McFly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, real? Um... There's a lot of people there that are real that I don't know that I could throw out there. I think it, I, you know, I know a lot of people don't like Jimmy Kimmel, but I think it'd be fun to hang out with Jimmy Kimmel or maybe Guillermo, his sidekick. <laughs> that might be more fun. Dead or alive? Dead. I think it'd be it'd be epic to smoke a spliff with Bob Marley. Okay. Real or fictitious, dead or alive. Real or fictitious, dead or alive. So those are a couple answers okay. right there. So do I pick one live, one dead? You can pick as many as okay. you like. So one dead, Elvis Presley. Oh, that's a great answer. Elvis Presley. I mean, come on. He he was Which he, Elvis? 
young Elvis, like 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 from no all all the Elvis, all of them from when when he met Priscilla on to the day he croaked. Yeah, like <laughs> like any of that. I, I mean, preferably the younger, like like um, movie star like, Elvis, h- like like young like naive. honey honeymoon. Palm Springs, or old fat Elvis. jaded Elvis. No, I'm talking like from from the Hollywood because old fat jaded Palm had, Springs, old fat jaded to, Elvis to the would international, buy, right, right? Vegas. Old old fat jaded Elvis would buy you a Cadillac. So, okay, that's funny you say that because the person that is alive that I would like to hang out with, <clears throat> would, and I'm going to bring them together. I wish I could get them together because they probably wouldn't. Is Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, Led Zeppelin? Oh yeah. Okay, they went and saw Elvis at at, at a at a concert local, and they ended up getting together at Elvis's like Hollywood house, whatever. And um, I mean, Elvis. I was reading a book, and and uh, it was um, the Led Zeppelin book, and they're like looking at the watch. He goes, "That's not a watch. Hold on, I'll be right back." He goes, "Here, here's a watch. Put this on." Like Elvis is like giving him, you yeah. know, yeah. one of his watches and stuff. You know, it's like. One of those funny things, but so that's my that's my dad, that's my life. Fake. Oh man, um, I, I, you can I'm gonna go, go with like, Han Solo. Han Solo is a good one. I'm gonna go with Han Solo because like Star Wars just was coming to my head. I'm like, which one am I gonna pick? Right. Am I gonna pick Obi Wan? Am I gonna one. pick Luke? Or am I gonna pick Han? I kind of thought it would be fun to go um, to go adventuring with uh, Indiana Jones. That's the same guy. It is. <laughs> It is. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean. Oh, dude, you got one of those. I love that. Yeah. I wanted one of these. Yeah. Oh, it's not a mug. No, that's, that's a, that's a actual release. Uh, um, it was like, you know, ordered on Disney, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm holding the, what would you call this? The, 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 idol? the idol. The yeah, idol, yeah, where he was like, where he, he was sizing up that bag sandbag. of sand. Yeah. yeah, he switched the sandbag with the idol. And I always wanted one of those because I thought that that was such a cool, it's such a cool movie, um, uh, I don't want to say prop, but uh, it's a significant thing, thing from a movie. Yeah. And it was during such a fun, not well, not then it was fun, but the whole you know good guy bad guy Germans versus the American right, type right, thing, you right, know, it's, right. it's just the funny, funny great movie with with yes tons of adventure. Right. Okay. Uh, three things that you could have on a deserted island. Three things that I could have on a deserted island. So these are my answers. I don't remember all three. One of them was uh, internet. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's not being on a deserted island, right. brother. Well, it can be on a deserted island as long as there's Wi-Fi, right? Second one would be a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> we are way off. Right? And, and third thing would be a boat. <laughs> <laughs> to get off the island. Man. <laughs> You oh man, you would not fit on Gillings Island. <laughs> You'd be off that island the first day. Come pick me up. Right. <laughs> the weather looks. I'm looking at the internet. The weather looks good. Yeah, we can go now. <laughs> can I map quest or can I map oh quest? That's how old I am. Can I waze from a boat? <sighs> well, we know. It's I, gotta, fun. I gotta go with the, the things that come to my head. That's you know what. That's what I like to do is go with the first things that come to my head. Get on a train, and turn your GPS on. And do like a Google map to wherever, to your mom's house or whatever, and get on a train and let it, it just redirects and redirects and redirects and redirects, <laughs> right? Because you're not on a road, you're on a train track. All, All right. right, so what are your, what's your answer? I got to go, I got, I got go with, with actually what came to my head. Um, fruit. So you got like your, your, your pineapples mm-hmm. and mangoes all that kind of fun stuff because that you want that goes on a tropical you tree. want an island that's abundant with yeah fruit okay that. um i'm just gonna go with just simple not not that i'm um number one is rum but um rum goes good with with fruit and then and then my my family i figure i can live off of the the rum the fruit and then my family, I guess. I mean, see, I'm, being, I'm being kind of cautious there, but but I mean, see, you love your family. I do love my family. I love my family too. I never see. I should. I should have 
I should have said my family, but then I'd be subjecting them to being on a de deserted island. Well, the funny me. part was I was thinking about like, like, like boars or pigs, but then I'm like, okay, I guess on the island I got to figure out how to make some spears or something because I don't have, I, I, I didn't say a gun. Right. Then if you have a gun, you got to have ammunition. <laughs> right. Like how, how technical do we want to get? <laughs> well, if you have a spear and you have a reef, then you might be okay for yeah. for your protein. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I, I can straight up be Tom Hanks. Straight Castaway. up be Tom Hanks. All right. So we got one last question for you. What's on your bucket list? Bucket list? Man, you got me on that one because there's a lot that I've... Uh... There's a lot on mine. No, there's uh, a lot that I've been able to do. I, I keep, I I'd love to have, I, I'd love to, uh, like one of the things in my bucket list is I'd love to ride a junk in China. And then, which may or may not, I may, I may regret that. But I also would like to have a fugu in, in Tokyo or somewhere in Japan. I, I was going to say, a lot of mine would be travels. You yeah. know, um, I, I need to make it down to like, like either the Cook Islands, New Zealand area. Yeah. I haven't been to that part. The other part of me, you know, like we're going to, back to Maui um, this October, and then because um, uh, our ten years coming up, that's where we got married. So oh, gonna, yeah, congratulations! We're, so dude. we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take the kids, show them that area. Haven't been to that island since then. Okay, so we'll go there. But once we once we do Maui, like man, I'm I'm kind of craving go to Ireland. There you go. So it's like more of my bucket list nowadays. Have you been probably, there already? Have you been no. there before? Okay. No, and I in my in my head, what I want to do is like. A like two nights in the castle, yeah. and then the rest of the time just like bed and breakfast st yeah. style, and um, you know hit up Jameson, hit up the hell yeah dude, hit up the Guinness plant, hell yeah, you know just just all that, um, and and also just go back east, yeah, you know there's so much in our own country that I'd love to go, yeah, see. there's a love a lot I'd, I'd love to see, there's a lot that I'd love to see here in our own country, but you know, I mean. I guess like re recently, I've been watching um, the Masters of the Air, which then led me to watch Band of Brothers again. And I'm like, man, there's a B-17, like over in like, I think it's uh, uh, Chino or somewhere that goes up in the air every once in a while. I'd love to get in that. Go Is for that a the flight. Chino Air Museum? Yeah, I think okay. so. I think so. I I know there's a B-17 that every once in a while I'll see f flying around here. Yeah. I think that's the one at the Chino Air Museum because I think there's one over there. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to fly in that. Yeah, but um, I've I've had a good life, so like, yeah, I'm I'm very humble where I'm at and enjoying what I'm what I'm where I'm at. I love you it. You know, it's 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 good stuff. So, you know, I got good friends, good cocktails, good yeah. family. Good. I job. love it. Living with gratitude. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, I think that's an awesome way to wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having Dude, us. Thank you. Appreciate man. you so much. Appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for the awesome cocktails and the spread that you put out for us. The hospitality is insane here. I love coming here. And uh, if you want anybody to check out your your place, do you want to throw out your it's social simple. media? The, in the Instagram is just the River Kai. Okay. Uh, the it, I mean, and so where did the where did the name River Kai come from? So we live in Riverside. Sure. My firstborn was Kai. And that's how I came up with there you go. the River Kai. Okay. Plain and simple. I like it. It kind of sits out differently from the rest, but it's it's mine. Okay. So the River Kai. Yeah, the River Kai. Okay, on so your... at the River Kai, we'll put a link in the description below so you guys can just click on that. And you can follow us at Polynesian Pop. Uh, again, we have a Patreon. If you want to check that out, that helps support the show, patreon.com slash Polynesian Pop. And if you want to follow our adventures, we have a YouTube youtube.com slash polynesian pop and check that out and we're going to have a video of some of this up there as well so nice. and there's already some video up there of the river kai so yeah yeah you got so it during uh out. during the holidays so yeah yeah so come come by and check that out but uh shout out to our friend robert for opening up the river kai for us making his cocktails serving us snacks and all that good stuff until the next time we bid you a cheers and aloha aloha, aloha.